Yeah. He's like, I left the house on the way. Actual <laughs> bike. Dude paid six grand for this thing. Uh, oh, all right. Toolbox talk. Toolbox <coughs> talk. Today is the twenty-second ish. Twenty. It's not twenty-second. Twenty-six. And we asked last week we had a company Thanksgiving, so we didn't really have a cool toolbox talk. So we just ate food and chilled a little bit. Uh, but we, upon review, we did Q last week. Did we do Q last week? I think we did. We didn't last one we did. Well, the week before. I think we did Q. So we went over. Was it Q or R? Oh, uh, we haven't done R yet. I'm pretty sure we haven't done R. Q was last week, which was questions. It wasn't very long. No, I thought we've already done F. Yeah, we did Q, R, S. Yeah. We're on T. We're on T. We're on T? Yeah, we're on T. I think you're right. Yeah, because we, 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 we did safety, safety for two, two weeks. weeks. You're right. So we are on T. Is the word of the day. Um, so, obviously, tools is a big one. Um, talking is a big one. Technology is a big one to me. I like technology. Uh, teaching is an important one. Slash tolerance. Tolerance is important one Thank you. those of you who like to wear uh thongs i mean we need to be understanding Colors. um what else i think that's plenty i think it's plenty. okay so tools i feel like as a company we're doing a lot better as far as our own tool collections obviously you know as a tradesperson, so there's a difference. We talked about it before, but as a laborer, I don't know why I'm elaborating on this, but a laborer basically is somebody who gets paid to do whatever somebody else tells them. Okay, that's the job of the laborer. Um, so basically, a laborer shows up and he just does whatever anybody tells him to do. That's his job. Okay. Um, a tradesperson, so the next step, an apprentice. Apprentice, why, why am I talking about this? This is a new subject. And it's good. An, an apprentice is someone who actually has a plan to learn something in particular, a, a specific trade. So an apprentice would be doing a laborer's job while being taught something. Um, specifically, whatever, whatever the teacher is wanting. So. If it's trim carpentry, or if it's drywall, or if it's roofing, an apprentice is actively learning something while being told what to do. Okay. Once you get past an apprentice, you become a tradesperson, or, or we call it a tech, a tradesman. The new word that you're in. Slash tech. That's the next one up. So a tradesman actually knows what to do, and the reason I'm bringing this up is a tradesman will actually have tools. Okay, a laborer and apprentice, they're not really expected to have much tools. Um, but when you get to a skilled person, if I was gonna ask James to do a metal roof, I would expect him to have snips, a drill, uh, you know, curtain poles, whatever he needs to do the job. I don't need to supply him at that point with it because he already has the tools, he has the knowledge, he has the tools, he's doing it. Um, the, next, the next step up would be journeyman. Um, not only does he know what to do, I think it's man, I don't know. Not only does he know what to do, he has enough experience to be able to direct other people well, okay? Um, the difference between a tradesman and a journeyman is typically a tradesman's good by himself, a journeyman is going to be able to direct a crew. So it's kind of like a lead, lead foreman, something along those lines. Um, because there's a difference, there's a difference between being able to do something yourself and being able to handle having a crew of people doing the same thing. Sometimes it's a shit show, like if they, you're better off doing it by yourself versus help other people, okay? 
And then when you get in past that, you go into Lost. like management. Lost. Management slash master. Uh, master. Be master carpenter, master plumber, master electrician. Those guys, they're no longer using as much of their actual physical. They're mostly using their brain. Their brain. Okay. Which is where I'd like to be someday. <laughs> now, hey. We'll see where we're at, you never know, okay? Um, and then oh, yeah, you, you get into, oh, we're all you, what, what's, what's interesting <laughs> when dealing with tools, because we're talking about tools is a T, but what, what happens when you get into the different trades, I guess I maybe I should put trades in here. Trades might be an important one. When you get into the different trades, you may have somebody who is a very skilled, maybe journeyman carpenter, journeyman drywaller, who is, being instructed or who's being scheduled by a paper guy who knows absolutely nothing. So like Ben could be scheduling a crew like James who knows some metal roofing to go do something. Like Ben would be James' boss as knows absolutely nothing, but he would be the boss of the guy who knows everything because uh, Ben's, you know, ordering the materials, Ben's scheduling out the jobs. It's a different role, you know. Yeah. So they don't always necessarily cross. Just because you're good at something does not necessarily make you the boss, you know. Um, just something good to know. Under pro contractors, that happens. Uh, yeah, and I mean, everybody already knows, everybody is somebody's boss. So like, just because somebody else gets assigned the boss role of that day or of that job, it does not make them the boss. It doesn't matter if they are the boss, they're not, you know. This either doesn't make them accountable. Yeah. There's got to be someone who's accountable for the job, exactly. production, yep. or making sure uh, safety, for ensuring um, uh, quality, uh, and uh, like a soup does, like he did mm -hmm. when we, he and Joe and Harry. <laughs> yeah, those things happen. They're part of life. So briefly, the trades. Since we are on key for tools, um, there's. Each individual trade has its own, but like most of them kind of go into different categories. So roofing is its own trade, uh, flooring is its own trade, uh, painting is its own trade. Uh, we call it wall covering. Wall covering? I believe, I'm not positive, but drywall, drywall, uh, other kinds of wall coverings, you know. Uh, they would all fall under a, a trade specifically. Um, you know, there's framing that's a trade. There is trim carpentry, which is a trade. There's there's specific genres of things that people have a set. Concrete. They've learned. You know, yeah, concrete. I mean, there's quite a few. Um, what what sucks for us a little bit is we are remodeling involves almost every single one of, of the trades, okay? And we do a lot of remodeling, which is kind of hard to learn because then you're learning like the whole the whole trades. So there's a lot for us to learn as we're doing remodels. As we grow, normally what happens is if there's a crew that's good at drywall, they become a drywall trade. And then we have multiple crews doing the same project. So drywallers come in, they do the drywall. You know, the plumbing come in, they do the, like, so each trade does their thing, they let the other guys do their thing, okay? As you get bigger, that's kind of what happens. But, back on the keys, part of being in a trade is you have the tools, you have the teaching, I'm just gonna, add this to this to basically help you move up that ladder of skill hopefully that ladder should also have a pay raise as you do it so like if i know that i don't have to direct somebody then obviously you know i'm going to trust them with company card i'm going to you know make sure that they have what they need whether it's a company vehicle whether it's um some sort of bonus incentive to help them you know keep the guys going whatever it might be um, and, and the resources for them to know what they're doing, okay? But eventually, if I'm always having to tell you, 
like what you need to do and knowing that you're going to have to like, uh, or knowing that you don't know, then you're going to be treated as a laborer, which means you're going to be told what to do, monitored, you know, during the whole job. And then I'm going to have to dedicate either my time or another manager's time to constantly kind of watch the situation. So I, I spread myself out. Business. Yeah. So, so it's for us as tradespeople, as we're learning, Part of part of our job is like actual learning. I don't, I don't want, it doesn't make sense, but part of our job is like actual educating ourselves to know our trade, because the end goal is for us to become a journeyman slash master tradesman of our craft. If our craft is remodeling, then that means you're going to know a whole bunch. You know, um, if your craft is drywall. And you're the drywaller, then you're gonna know everything there is to know about drywall. Um, but you don't just learn by doing. Learning is one way. The issue is, you know, one house, you know, like in a wood framed house is gonna be done one way. Commercial metal studs is gonna be done a different way. So unless you're doing all the different kinds, you're gonna get limited experience if you're just learning by hands on. The way you're gonna be learning is by being taught. Whether it's through technology like YouTube, whether it's through teaching like a toolbox talk, or we have a somebody who's an expert come in and do a talk about it or a show, um, all those things are important. Okay, so that's trades, tools, teaching, um, talking. Let's go briefly over talking. Talking is something that everybody should be good at. Um, some people would rather not talk. Some people are very content with um, not talking too much. But when it comes to being professional, there's a couple things that I recommend when it comes to talking. Um, number one thing is slow down. Okay. So typically, anytime you're in a situation with somebody new, somebody that you trust or somebody you want to look good in front of, somebody that uh, you are trying to get something across to, typically your adrenaline goes up and even if you're not scared, you, you, can, you can just be excited. You know, like, hey, look, I'm going to show you this. It's going to be amazing. You know, we're going to do this thing together. You, you almost always speed up. Most people speed up. I speed up. I know I have, I, I find myself talking too fast. So one of the things to do, if you're trying to communicate, is slow down, okay? So you're gonna slow down, and then two, as you're talking or as you're communicating, you need to listen, okay? So one of the biggest turnoffs when you're talking to somebody else is you know they're waiting for you to get done talking so they can tell you something, you know? so. It's a very common, we all do it, unfortunately. But like, let's say, for example, I mean, I'm sure this never happened. Somebody showed up late, okay? So, I am planning, you know, on, on like telling him, hey, look, you've got a history of showing up late. You know, this happened, this happened, this happened. You know, sure. and so <laughs> in, instead, of, instead of like hearing any reason why, I've already made some assumptions and I'm already, like a little bit disappointed or something like that. So it doesn't matter what, what theoretically somebody tells me, I'm just waiting for them to get done talking so I can tell them what I want, you know? Well, instead of listening, it just makes you look like an asshole, basically. Or it makes you look disconnected from your, your group of people that you're trying to talk to. Sometimes it's fine to be an asshole. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. In general though, you need to listen. This happens in, you know, wife relationships. This happens with girlfriend relationships. Like, it's very important as the old guy here to tell you younger guys, like, you need to listen. You know, and, and normally, if you're, if you're watching, like, the YouTube videos on the guys who are, like, you know, the talker guys who can sell anything or do anything, one of their things that they're going to say is you need to connect with the person and tell them what they're going to tell you. So they like so they understand that you already know what they're gonna say. Or you already know what they're feeling and you already know. So like you're connecting with them like 
hey, I know, you know, theoretically somebody struggles with getting up in the morning and maybe their mom is mad at them or something, you know, so she didn't wake me up or something along those lines, theoretically, you know. Um, but it's important to slow down, <coughs> listen, and then as you're talking, like, so say we're talking to a customer, uh, this, this is a hard one. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. I don't know if it's minimize or if it's condense. Condense, yeah. Condense. So you, there's not much good that comes out of saying too much. I mean, you're way better off saying the bare minimum. You know, like, hey, see you later. You know, that's it. That's pretty much all you gotta say. You know, or or you could be like, hey, we uh, ran into a slowdown on this job, okay? Instead of saying we ran into a slowdown on this job, I could be like, hey, we're broke, I can't pay this bill. You know, this guy came in, I could give this whole backstory as to why we have a slowdown, uh, but it doesn't help them. All it does is create more possible issues. So talking is, Condensing down to the minimum, it's just very helpful. I mean, it keeps the ability for error to, uh, you know, at least minimize it. I mean, we're also gonna make mistakes. Just be careful. Um, and typically, the guys who don't talk as much, people listen to them the most, you know. So if, say, Ben says something, most of us pay attention because Ben doesn't talk like a ton, you know. Um, if I say something, everybody like doesn't hear me because their earbuds are in. It's that point. Okay, so that's talking. What? What did you just say? Oh my god. <laughs> so. Okay, so talking. Technology. I'm a big fan of technology. It's a wonderful thing. Um, learn to use it properly, obviously. Uh, things that we don't use technology enough for is we don't use our phones uh we don't use our phones to help us as much as we could i feel like we use our phones to communicate i feel like we use our phones to uh like soothe us or calm us down music youtube whatever audiobooks those things are all fine but technology is something that that should be used uh to to help in our jobs okay Things that technology can help in our jobs is timers. Timers, alarms, reminders. I don't know how you use reminders. Reminders. Uh, list. Um, we typically don't use these things. I mean, you know, people used to have watches back in the old days and they'd use them. But now, so we'll sit there doing a project, kind of just chilling out and doing our thing, uh, when we could have a timer running to kind of like see what our pace is gonna be for a job. Or we could have an alarm set, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work super good for two hours and then take my break. You know, instead we end up working three hours, get a little grumpy because we didn't take a break, you know, and then we have a couple hours where we're just not as efficient because we want, we're not setting ourselves some goals. Uh, things that I do, I would say one of the best things is app stores for like Lowe's or Home Depot. Or yeah, I mean, you know, I always have, time. yeah, I mean, you can wander around in Lowe's, you can wander around in Lowe's for 10 minutes, or you can pull up the Lowe's app and it'll show you exactly where the wow. thing is in the store, yeah. yeah. And okay. so using, using those kind of things, they do save time. Most of the like, uh, people who kind of promote 10 times or like being successful or those kind of guys, they normally have like, this is my task list for the day, where you set your list and you check it off at the end of the day, you know? So in the morning, pretty much for me every morning, I have a today list, I have like a tomorrow list, and I'll like write down anything that I know is important that I gotta make sure I do today, and I'll check it off at the end of the day, and if I didn't get to it, then that's the real important stuff for tomorrow, you know? Just so you know, use it, use it wisely. Um, be, be careful 
Technology is one of those things that can zap a lot of your, your time if you're not using it wisely. It can be a really good tool and it can be a dangerous tool. So let's take teaching. We've already kind of gone over it. Uh, if you're going to continue to go farther in life as an employee, as a tradesperson, um, you should get to the point to where you can teach somebody else what you know. I mean, that's the way human expand. That's the way we grow. So not everybody is destined to be a teacher, but one of the best ways of learning is by teaching somebody else. So you, like if I'm doing drywall and I'm teaching somebody else, I'm like helping myself in the process. Now, if you don't actually know what you're doing, that's very dangerous, <laughs> you know. But in general, if you're showing somebody the way to do something, then you're actually kind of thinking through the process, you're more aware of it, you know, and instead of something that you just did automatically because you didn't think about, you're creating a system. What we're trying to do here as a company is to create processes to where we become the next McDonald's. Yeah, no. <laughs> McDonald's, I don't know. McDonald's. So like our goal is to create uh, the same burger no matter who's cooking it. Okay. And the way that happens is there's process. So like if I if I am, am selling drywall at which I do like two thirty five a square foot, then I should be able to send Noah or send James or send Joe, and that drywall should look the same from all four guys, or all five guys, or whoever the crews are. The way that works is what McDonald's does, because McDonald's ships in high school kids, whoever they can get, doesn't pay them a ton of money, but they, they tell them, like, you do this step, this step, this step, this step, this step, and it creates the same burger, no matter where you go. Push two minutes, push two minutes. Yeah, whatever it is. So the process that they done, they teach the process, they've got it down to a science, that's our goal for our crews to learn the process. Like for drywall, you mix this much water in every single five gallon bucket, or there's this much water in every 3.5, you know, box of mud. You, you do these three steps, you do these three steps, you always wash your tool, you know, to where it can be duplicated by new people as they come in, okay? Teaching though is something as you're doing yourself, that, that you should be kind of aware of those things. You don't just do it because you're on the clock getting paid. You do it because you're, you're skilled in your trade, you're learning, okay? That's that. Okay, last one is tolerance. Um, pretty much everybody is tolerant until they're annoyed, okay? So pretty much everybody is good at being tolerant if they're not around the person, if the person doesn't have any issues, then it's really easy to be tolerant because there's nothing you're being tolerant of. Frankly, um, being tolerant. Yeah, we tolerate you, Daniel. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Being tolerant is a skill that's He's only in place you. when you're activated. So he, like, you're not tolerant if you're not mad, okay? So the way that works is, Let's say, theoretically, um, this is just in theory. Just in theory. Just in theory, say that Cody right. has a job going, okay? A side job. Cody has a side job. Okay? So, Cody Goody. plans for, oh, it's Goody. I like it. Um, Cody plans for having this much help or something like this, okay? So he plans for, hey, you know, he's gonna get a couple guys hey, I want three guys, we're gonna knock this job out. Um, theoretically, what could happen is maybe one of those guys or two of those guys decide not to show up because they have better things to do, okay? Theoretically. So, Cody then, Cody, Cody then gets annoyed, possibly. Okay, this is just theoretical. Um, so what tolerance is, is Cody then gets to practice being tolerant 
So obviously, if you're not tolerant if there's no annoying. You're not tolerant if, because uh, you're just normal or just, you know. So, so what tolerance is, is Cody practicing tolerance then gets to look past look past any issue and give room for disagreement, okay? And this is important as we grow as a company because everybody already knows we're not going to agree on certain things. We're not going to see the other side, or we're not going to um, we're not going to be on the same page on certain subjects. For me, it, it's come down to where I have been annoyed, and this is totally theoretical as well. That like I work a whole bunch of hours, and Joe or maybe other potential owners of the company don't work as many hours. Um, or at least used to. Now Joe works a crap ton of hours, you know. Um, but like in the past, Joe would be sitting on a salary, chilling at the house, having a, you know, <clears throat> we're being filmed, having a recreational <clears throat> smoke uh, while I'm busy working, and we're both getting paid. <laughs> so, 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 so like, what happens? What happens? Okay, what happens is Joe comes to work, ready to work, like. Everybody else is on Monday, and I am having to tolerate Joe because I'm annoyed because, in my opinion, he's not on the same page as me, okay? Um, what tolerance is, what tolerance is, is looking past that to be like, hey, look, you know what? I'm dropping it. I may not agree with it, but you know what? We're in this together. We're a crew. We're doing our thing, okay? Tolerance isn't necessarily like being on the same page, you know. Um, Joe thinks I work too much. I think Joe's probably right, but it's still annoying when I work too much, you know. But like, tolerance isn't necessarily like coming to some sort of like, well, you just need to tell me that I'm right, you know. Or you just need to change because this habit of you not working enough is like, you know, I don't like it. You know, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. Like, we're gonna get along. We're a crew. Our job is to get along. I don't necessarily like. Let's, let's hope there's not a whole bunch of new tolerance. Yeah, yeah, and then hopefully the goal should be for us to be able to work through it and tolerate, if not like enjoy working together. Attitude does affect how you work on the job or how things. It does. Receive, how it you does. listen and stuff. So tolerating each other is. Yeah, and, and tolerating is, is more than really keep efficient. And professional. I mean, we don't have to like each other. We do have to work together. Yep. You know, and, and I won't go, and everybody here knows, we don't do the high school stuff where I don't want to work with that guy. You know, where I'm, you know, where that guy is, whatever. I mean, like, our job is to be professional, to bring out the most in everybody, and go from there. Okay? That's tolerance. That's the toolbox talk for tea. We're almost to Christmas. Everybody needs a whole bunch of money for Christmas. Including me, because I spent all my money. But um, I am going to have all these. So I, I do have all these toolbox talks online and the YouTube channel, and I do want everybody to review different ones as needed. Just keep that in mind.